Good morning. Welcome to our What Do I Do series. Glad you're joining us today. Uh, we wanted to start this series because we wanted to try to uh, answer some really important questions in a short amount of time. And so today I want to answer this question. God doesn't answer my prayers. So what do I do? What do I do? Because we've all been there. We've all been at that place. We pray for things like really, really important things. Like I need my wayward child to come home. I need my marriage to be restored. I need a sickness to be healed, a job offer to come in. But what happens sometimes is we pray for these things and then nothing happens. None of those things that we just prayed for look like they're even going to happen. In fact, a lot of times the opposite happens. <laughs> okay, that's just the way it is. The child stays away. The spouse files for a divorce, the sick person dies, the job is given to someone else. And the problem with that is that when that happens, so many times people just walk away from their faith. They're just like, you know what, I'm just not going to believe in this Jesus thing anymore. Because you know, I pray, he's not listening, he doesn't do what I want, he doesn't care about me, he isn't listening to me. And, and, and here's what we think, why am I wasting my time? Why am I wasting my time? And honestly, I get that. I can't tell you how many prayers I prayed, and I mean really, really important things that I needed God to come through. Like a 13-year-old friend of ours had cancer, 13. Prayed, begged God, please, please save him. Please heal him. And, and he died. We have another friend of ours who's in a ministry, loves Jesus, got COVID, ended up in the hospital. Prayed, 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 everyone was praying for him, and he died. And see, I assume most of you have your own stories of the same thing happening. So that's why I think talking about prayer is really important today. Because a lot of things that we're taught might not be the way it really is. See, a lot of us have heard things and read our Bibles and we read passages like this. Matthew 21, 22. And if you believe, you'll receive whatever you ask in prayer. So for us, it's like, well, I believe, God, that you can heal that person, so therefore God's obligated to do that. That's kind of how we feel. Philippians 4, 6 says, don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your requests be known. Just, just ask God. And if we believe Matthew 21, 22, then, then we should just get what we pray for. We read in James 5, 16, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. But what if, what if we actually don't have the right perspective on prayer? What if we've been taught somewhere along the line that if you pray and if you have faith, then God is kind of obligated to just give you whatever you want. In other words, God's kind of like a vending machine. You put a quarter of faith in and you put a dime of time, the time that it takes to pray the prayer, and a nickel of belief, and then out of the vending machine will come the answer we want to our prayer. But is that true? So what does Jesus say about this? Because I think he would know. Since the Bible says that Jesus is God and that Jesus came down from heaven to this earth, then I assume he's been with God. He knows exactly how prayer works. So we have this scene in Matthew where the disciples saw Jesus praying. And they're quite confused because these guys were good Jewish boys. They were taught to recite prayers and, and verses from the Torah over and over again. And suddenly they see Jesus talking to God, having a conversation like, like he knows him. And that was very odd to them. So they asked Jesus one day, they said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. We don't understand this. So they asked him what to do. And Jesus tells them. And the first thing Jesus says is this, don't pray to be seen by people. Now the reason why he tells them that first is because this is a very religious, pharisaical group of Jewish people that, that are at the temple. And they're always praying out loud these elegant prayers to be seen by people. And Jesus is like, yeah, don't do that. Matthew 6, 5 says this, whenever you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites because they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by people. I assure you they've got your reward. They got the reward because people are looking at them going, oh, look how spiritual they are. But it's not the reward from God. 
Jesus says this in verse 6, but when you pray, go into your private room and shut your door. In other words, get alone by yourself where there is peace and quiet. And that doesn't mean that every time we pray, we have to run into our prayer closet to pray. Because we see Jesus praying lots of different times in the Bible, and he didn't have to run into a, a prayer closet to pray. But he prayed with what we're going to talk about in mind all the time. The reason why I think Jesus says to get alone is because it's really hard to focus on God when there's chaos all around us. Like there, it just is, there's just, it's, it's so hard to focus. And God is saying on those things that are just so incredibly important, get away by yourself and let's have a conversation where it's quiet. Now this next point is really interesting, Jesus said. He said, you need to pray to the Father. He says this, and pray to your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. See, we don't know who to pray to. Dear Jesus, dear Holy Spirit, dear, dear, great God. Like no one knows how to even start a prayer, but, but he's saying, pray to the Father. He, he's your heavenly Father, and it denotes this relationship. Like if you had a bad father growing up on this earth, then, then that's going to be a struggle for you. But you need to find out what this heavenly Father is all about. And he loves you and he cares for you and he wants the best for you and he has a plan for your life. This is the Father that we're praying to. Then Jesus says this, don't pray repetitive words and phrases. Don't, don't, don't say the same things over and over and over in, in hopes that maybe the longer you say it and the louder you say it, it will get God's attention. It doesn't work that way. Verse 7 says, when you pray, don't babble like the idolaters since they imagine they'll be heard by their many words. See, some people think, if I just pray this 100 times in a row, that God's going to listen to me. But God's like, you don't need to do that. And the question is, why? And he answers that in verse 8. He said, don't be like them, because your Father knows the things you need before you ask. He's saying, God knows everything you need before you even ask it. God, I need that job. God, I like a child. God, I want to get married. God, he already knows it. And so the question then is, well, if he knows it, then why in the world do we pray anyway? Why are we praying? If God knows what I need, then why am I wasting my breath? And this is what Jesus is trying to say. We got it all wrong about prayer. Prayer is not about us. Prayer is not just about God giving us whatever we want. God is not our Santa Claus in the sky. Because we, he already knows what we need. So then if that's the case, what's the deal? And Jesus explains it when he gives them what we know as the Lord's Prayer. And I'm only going to give you two quick verses because you got to get this foundation first before you ever understand prayer the way it's meant to be. Matthew 6 verse 9 says this, Then this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. See, prayer doesn't start with, Oh God, I need this! Prayer starts with, My Father. My Father in heaven, who really, really, like, you're, you're awesome. You're awesome that you would even listen to me. You're so big. You're so powerful. See, I think that's where we get all messed up with prayer. We think it's us, me. I need my list. I need that job. I need that money. I need the healing. I need, I need you to change this. I, need, I, 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 but Jesus says prayer does not start with you. Prayer starts with recognizing who our Heavenly Father is. Prayer starts with being amazed that God is listening to us. Prayer starts with recognizing that if you've given your life to Jesus, if you consider yourself a Christian, then you're a child of God. And He's your Heavenly Father. You're part of His family. Now, the, the scary part is if you're listening to this and you're not a Christian, you're like, well, I don't even believe this stuff, then none of this applies to you. But if you want to know how to become a Christian, I'll put a link at the bottom of this video on how to become a Christian so you can become a part of the family. And so therefore you can, you know, have access to God. But prayer starts with God. And then Jesus says this, your kingdom come, verse 10, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, that's the problem with prayer. The prayer is this, I care about my kingdom. The problem is this, we don't care much about God's kingdom, but we do care about our own kingdom. Because my kingdom is about me. I need God to give me what I want to make me happy. I want to be healthy. I want to have a boat. I want to have a beach house. I want you to make me happy, God. 
And Jesus is like, that's why your prayers aren't working. That's not why they're working. Because you're making your life and your prayers about you and not about the, the kingdom of God, not about the things of God. See, this is the point we need to get to with being a follower of Jesus. When we surrender, this is the problem, people don't know what it means to follow Christ. But when you decide to become a follower of Jesus, it means this, we surrender. We surrender. My life is yours, God. You do whatever you need to do with me. We surrender our life to his will. And honestly, his will looks so different from my will most of the time. But that's what following Jesus is all about. It's saying, God, I'm here to serve you on this earth. My prayers need to align with your will. I don't need you to try to get, give me what, what my will is if it's not your will. But see, we've reduced following Jesus to just saying a quick prayer. Hey, Jesus, come in my life. Yay, I get to go to heaven now. And that's not what, what following Jesus is even about. It's about surrendering our life to him. And then saying, God, no matter what I have to go through, I just want it to be about you. We see this with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's looking towards the cross, the torture he's about ready to go through. And he prays this in Matthew 26, 39. Going a little farther, he fell on his face to the ground and he prayed, My father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me. In other words, God, if there's any other way, I'm on board with that other way. It's like us saying, God, I really, really want this healing. God, I really need this job. God, I really want. But he ends with surrendering his will to the Father. Yet not as I will, but you will. See, that's the foundation to prayer. And that's where we start. And then, of course, yes, we do pray for things that, you know, God, help my marriage. God, bring my kids up in knowing you. Uh, but we ask those things in a different light. We ask those things in the light of what God is doing on this earth. So back to the question, God doesn't answer my prayers, so like, what do I do? And I think it, 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 the answer is this. First, you need to make sure that, uh, understand what following Jesus is really all about. Make sure you understand what following Jesus is all about. It's about you surrendering to him whatever he needs to do in this world. And then pray for God's will over your will. That's what we need to do. But sometimes we get fearful of that. We're terrified. We're like, ah, if I, if I give my will over to God, then he's going to take that guy from me or take that child from me or take that house from me. But I think it's a false view of God. See, we need to go back to the beginning and understand what we signed up for when we decided to give our life to Jesus. And if we're actually fearful for praying for his will, then that might be a red flag to you to say, you know what, something's not right in my Christian walk. God, I'm scared you're going to take things away from me. So would you help me to, to learn how to surrender my life to you? Because I know you always do things that, that matter for the kingdom of God and not for my kingdom. We are supposed to pray for what we need. Matthew 6, 11, give us today our daily bread. But see, that's the thing. We have to learn how to trust God for whatever answer he gives us. And we have to be okay with it. See, I had to bow my knee to, from what I wanted, which was a 13-year-old boy to live and not die, and a very good friend of ours to live and not die. But I had to bow my will, what I wanted, to the will of God. And see, in both situations, God seemed to not answer our prayers, but he actually did. Because when we end our prayers with, but God, I just want what you want. I don't know why he took the 13-year-old boy or why he took our friend. I don't know that, but I don't need to know why. I just need to know the who. And I know God is my lovingly heavenly father. And he knows something that I don't know and I don't see in this world. So I want to surrender what I want to him. And that's what prayer is all about. Hope that helps you. Have a really good day.